Thank you so much, Justin. And thank you, Brandy and the whole Creative Mornings team. We are super honored to be even asked to do something like this. Um, it feels like it's been so long um, that we've been doing this that it just, it's uh, its weird. Uh, to... I feel like I should be wearing a mask. I've never been, I, I haven't even been in front of this many people in a long time, so. About two years. So oh, yeah. thank you all for, uh, for coming out, especially so early in the morning, especially everybody on the West Coast and all over the world. Uh, I know that it's crazy uh, early in the morning in, in some places. Yeah, I was reading um, that some people would be tuning in at 6 a.m. And there's not a lot of things I would do at 6 a.m. or wake up for. So we really appreciate that. Um, so around the theme of release, a lot of things came to my mind when I was thinking about it originally. A lot of things came to my mind, if you know what I mean, huh? hey <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it too early for jokes like that? I, okay. Um, <clears throat> Ever too, yeah. early. Never too early. Uh, so the thing that just kept coming to my mind was two things at first. Um, one was the phrase, relax, relate, release. And I'm like, where does this come from? And I'm really going to date myself here. But it <laughs> comes from the show, A Different World, when Whitley Gilbert was going to therapy and her therapist was like, relax, relate, release. And I hear that in my head all the time. So, but in Whitley G Gilbert's Southern accent, relax, relate, release. Um, that is quite a throwback. I know, right? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then the other one, which is still gonna date me. I thought this would be more in um, this decade, but it's not the Hills theme song release your inhibitions, release your inhibitions. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know we were, I didn't know we were going there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's where you took it. it you know, it's that's, just where like, it, that's where it went when, the, when we were presented the topic. But a lot of, um, you know, when we first started doing YouTube almost two decades ago, when um, you said that, Justin, I almost cried. <laughs> I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, but we had to, you know, Rob and I had Pretty much just started dating and then we decided to start working together right away um and if you have been around that long <laughs> watching those videos or have gone back to watch old videos you'll remember that we used to do all the videos together they were very hosty they were very magazine style they were never over five minutes there was a lot of content packed into those five minutes and we spent very long time making those videos every week like it was we'd be awake all hours of the night and we would always argue about the dumbest things like a one second transition that i'm like oh uh, music, why would you put that there music that i wanted to use that she didn't want to use it was a consistent battle that not only was a work kind of thing that we had to get over but it was a relationship you mm -hmm. know struggles that we were trying to in the very beginning trying to get through through our work so we had to kind of release some control and that's really hard to do especially in a creative environment you you know it's it feels like you're you're creating something so you tend to have a lot of ideas already ingrained in your mind how you want something to look. And we realized if we want to continue being in a romantic relationship <laughs> with each other, we we're going to have to release a lot of that control and um, give in. <laughs> well, also learn how to compromise a lot in our, um, you know, our professional career. And that was really hard to do because we found that, you know, in a, in, a professional setting like in an office or something you would never you can't say the things that you yeah. normally would say in your house yeah you wouldn't uh, be like other. that's the worst thing i've ever seen <laughs> in my life you know why would you choose that you're you're much more cordial and professional you're not so, slamming doors or uh yelling <laughs> at each other or... <laughs> i have no idea what you're talking about um that was mostly rob by the way right. he likes to slam doors right. no <laughs> Um, so that was a big one for us early on. And then it became about releasing our actual content to the world. And that was really hard to do because, you know, here we have this new platform back when we started and it's mostly anonymous. People can just leave any old comment that they want to. And, um, it was really hard to kind of 
release control or release the uh, uh well your creativity onto the world god um, how many times if anyone's taken a little uh, count a little counter of how many times we have to say release here well we Jesus. were joking um in the pre-show <laughs> that every time we say the word release everyone should take a shot of water because it's 9 a.m where we are or coffee or something um or there if, you go hydrate or, or if it's later yes um but you good have- job sam <laughs> but you have to uh so many people like you're saying so many people leave comments that you have to re- relinquish control or relinquish the the idea that there's uh, what am i saying uh uh your what you got I, it it's okay no i'm trying to think of the right words um, um well is the word release <laughs> <laughs> no um you have to kind of give over a certain aspect of the process at that point because now there's nothing you can do about it you've already released this content into the world um when we first started out it was a lot of diy projects and how to do something so there would always be something where we didn't do the right thing or didn't use the right product or whatever and it would be a hundred of the same comment it's called mod podge not however you said it you know and it would be like uh you're always like why why and you can't change it you can't take it back so um and it's always something that you aren't expecting it to be (laughs) like oh i'm being so careful to make sure everything's right and then no matter what as soon as it's released you just can't take it back so i guess what i was trying to say is you got to release the idea that it's gonna or let control the idea that it's gonna be perfect that everything is gonna be perfect because that's not a real thing anyway perfectionism is a made-up concept that no one can achieve. So it's it's always going to be slightly imperfect, whatever it is that you create, or, you know, it's maybe there's, uh, we got some really good advice. Um, we were spending so long making videos that we just like, we're up until the deadline that we have to get the video out. I mean, staying up all hours of the night, trying to make it perfect. And one of our mentors told us that you know, there comes a point when you just have to release it. Like you can't keep working on it. Otherwise no one's ever going to see the work that you do. So you just kind of have to get to a point where you let it go. Um, and, and that's it. And it's kind of been like that, you know, I'll release a video and I, I'll watch it for a good amount of like maybe a, a couple hours as the comments first start rolling in, just to make sure there isn't anything over arcing that needs to change like sometimes we accidentally put our address in there and we have to like blur it out thank god youtube has um that tool now you can use to blur things out um but it i lost my train of thought but <laughs> uh, i drank a lot of coffee already so you're saying that you have we along lines of releasing videos mm-hmm. um you have to get things out uh and that was kind of like our big deal in the beginning was like getting out videos we, we released three videos a week yeah. Um, we got so crazy about it and that eventually led to us going absolutely insane, uh, over, over the, uh, over the time we, of 16 years, plus almost 17 years, yeah. we released uh, like thousands of videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and, oh yeah, that's what I was kind of saying was <laughs> I, that I knew I would get you. Yeah. I was like, that. wait, oh. that's what it was. Um, so there were there, you know, I would be so obsessive, like keep rewatching the video as it was uploaded. And then there comes a point when it's like, I never watched that video again. I don't go back. Now you got to move on to the next thing. And there's videos that we'll go back and watch. And I'm like, I do not even remember <laughs> making this video. It is crazy. But then you realize you go back and watch it again. It's like, wow, I really put a lot of hard work and blood, sweat, literal blood, <laughs> sweat and tears into making this. Um, so it's really interesting to just kind of be able to let go of those things um, after you kind of put it out there and into the world. Uh, Brooke actually had a really good question. Uh, they asked if there's any content we regret releasing over the past 10 plus years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rob has several. Well, I have several of Rob's video that I regret he's released over the past 10 years. I mean, you go back now and, you know, you if you make so much content, you definitely regret a lot of what you met. No, I mean, you don't regret, (laughs) you don't regret a lot of it, but like you definitely go back and 
all of those thoughts and all of those things that you had throughout time, like some of them were a little dicey, you know? Uh, and that's kind of one of the, the reasons why I don't personally make a lot of videos <laughs> right now is because there's so much like, I don't know, there's so much shit going on that like, I, there's a, there's some crazy shit that comes out of my mouth that like, I don't like, I don't need, I don't, really? need, I don't need to be making videos I don't, in this no. day and age anymore. That's not true. Um, um, I would but, say it was more like, I feel like for me personally, it was the bird one, the bird one. Anyone remember that one? What? I don't yeah, remember the, the bird one. Well, I don't uh -huh. even, I don't even remember. Yep. See, that's See, what I'm, I'm saying. getting a lot of head nods. It, yep. They agree. Um, <laughs> I made like an off color comment about like cats getting run over by cars the other day and like, just didn't, didn't go over well. And you then know? we bring it back up again today it's i'm awesome. just saying like it's just like things just don't <laughs> I say shit that just doesn't 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 go over well sometimes you don't want to release everything from your mouth that you are thinking in your mind is what you're saying exactly yeah uh-huh um, in this day and age be very be very careful well that that kind of segues <laughs> into something else i wanted to talk about um which was you know, our transition kind of from not making as many YouTube videos. So Rob had mentioned earlier is that, you know, in the beginning we were making like three videos a week. It was literally not only killing our relationship, but also physically very challenging. And I would make the joke all the time that if he didn't relax, um, he was going to have a heart attack. Ew. And then lo and behold, <laughs> A heart attack actually happened. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It wasn't just like he had a heart attack. Um, you know, I- I had an I'm autoimmune sure. disorder yeah. that I ended up just kind of ended up founding out that I have. Uh, and then crazily enough, got sick, had a heart attack, died. Uh, he was almost released <laughs> from his body. But boom, boom. Yeah. Um, take a shot. <laughs> and uh, ended up going into the hospital, going through a bunch of crazy shit. Uh, and then, you know, coming back out of it and realizing that we needed to, I needed to, and we needed to change some of our habits uh, on the way that we release videos and do things well, in it our was, lives. Rob is such a, he's just actually very responsible and very um, business minded and very consistent and very good at doing those things. So even, oh, thanks. Yeah, with the, <laughs> is it weird to get a compliment? <laughs> um, but even a week after coming out of the hospital, he was already trying to make videos again, you know, <laughs> like on the full schedule. And we actually ended up back in the hospital a few times because of that. Um, so <laughs> we really had to come to the realization that we kind of had to release the idea preconceived notion <laughs> um, of how we used to live our lives and how much content we used to release into the world. Uh, so that really shifted things. And then, you know, we made that video on Threadbanger talking about what happened to him and that, and I've only said this maybe a couple of times to Rob, but after that video went up, it really, was just a weird thing. Like, I felt like that was the end for me on Threadbanger. Like I'm, I was triggered by seeing the video there. Like I didn't even want to go back and watch, um, any of those videos there, or even look at the channel or anything like that. It's just like such a weird thing. And, you know, I've had to deal with this change in a different way. Like Rob, you know, he was unconscious for a lot of the stuff. So he didn't really, get to see a lot of um, the things that I had to witness. And it's just like, it has changed my whole entire perspective on life. A lot of things have changed here yeah. in the in the household since then. And so I've, you know, Corinne has gone on to uh, a new path, uh, releasing her uh, mind mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that she's going back to school mm -hmm. uh, and doing, uh, what are you doing? Well, climate it, change, activism, uh, yeah. law, mm -hmm. degrees. Uh, well, it was a combination of things. You know, when you experience something like that, um, you definitely, your perspective changes a lot. And I realized that as much as I love making videos about doing DIY projects, that maybe that wasn't as fulfilling as I was needing in my life. So um, you know, I started making more videos on my personal channel, kind of talking about things that weren't related to DIY. And um, 
going back to school and doing those things. But I, you know, it's, it's hard because a lot of people try to put you in a box and it's like, no, you make DIY videos. Now you're talking about politics or you're talking about Black Lives Matter or you're talking about the environment. I didn't come here for that. And so something I wanted to mention is that you kind of have to release everyone else's preconceived notions about what box that you fit in in order to grow and move on to other creative things. Like never let someone scare you into staying in the same box or category. Cause I even got a comment, you know, when I was, when I posted about this event on my Instagram, that was like, <laughs> it was pretty funny actually. They're like, oh, using the theme of release, when are you going to release some new videos that aren't talking about <laughs> politics or something like that? And, um, and it's like, maybe never, I don't know. I still do, you know, it's like not all my videos are heavy politics. Like I, I'll mention it, you know, um, kind of not lightly, but it's not like my video is all about that, but like people don't like change and, um, it's kind of hard to let that go and move on to the next thing. And I feel like this transition has been really rough. Like we don't wanna let anyone down. We have built this community of people that we love and we have been so appreciative of that have shown us so much love over the years um, that it's, it's really hard to let people down. But at the same time, you have to live your life too. And you have to do what fulfills you. And if you're not doing something that's authentically you, people are gonna see through that anyway. So you might as well just talk about what you love and do what you love instead of trying to remain in this box that you no longer fit in. And for me, that is also no longer making videos. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been in my basement for the past uh, two years <laughs> uh, since I came home for this, from this thing and uh, became an artist, I guess, uh, or a painter. Uh, I've been making videos for 25 years and since I was a kid, mm -hmm. uh, and my parents told me that I could, was never going to be like an artist or a painter, uh, when I was younger. And I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to like paint. And mm -hmm. so I have like hundreds of canvases now downstairs. And like, all I do now is like release, <laughs> I've released the painting Kraken <laughs> fucking down there and it's nuts uh and now I just like some of you uh, have gotten prints I've uh, made some prints I've done some stuff and like uh it's now uh become like my new career uh or my new you know destiny passion um and I release a new painting uh on the internet every almost, almost every day uh, and get feedback on it and kind of like go through the cycle of releasing and getting you know, <laughs> some kind of thing. Um, Stephanie has said that they bought one of your prints. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks. Uh, you know, that's what I mean. And like, so, so you get, I, I've, I get that fulfillment from like what I, when I used to release videos, like mm -hmm. now from that doing something that I love and it's a lot smaller now on a scale, but it's like still like I get more. Do you, um, do you feel like it's more like it's scarier to release that artwork versus the videos because oh, you were so comfortable doing videos oh, for yeah, your yeah, whole yeah, life. Yeah. No, yeah. it scares the shit out of me every every day, like being down there and doing that because it's like such a smaller thing and a newer thing for me that like I've now, you know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but like, you know, I'm drawing weird shit, doing weird shit down there. Uh, but it's, you know, you always got to experiment. You've always got to get outside of your box and you've always got to try new things. And, you know, yeah, you only live twice, you know, <laughs> uh, is what I like to say. So, oh, goodness. Um, 